Hey, and welcome back to Smoky Ribs. This is going to be part two, the second video in a hot dog series. I'm doing a request by Terry Lyle. He's a subscriber of mine on my Smoky Ribs YouTube channel. And uh, he requested that I try to duplicate a famous hot dog, or at least it's famous in this area of Jamestown, New York, at a place called, called Johnny's Lunch. And uh, what they serve there is a Texas hot wiener. And this is a t Texas hot wiener sauce. Well, I have researched and researched and researched and trying to come up with an authentic original recipe on the internet. You might as well forget it. It ain't going to happen. You'll see a lot of people's take on it, a lot of variations, but you'll never run across that recipe. But Tom Jones over at Tom's Test Kitchen, he has a video that he did a while back on this Texas uh, wiener sauce and basically from what I've read through Terry as well this is a very close replica to what they serve there and so I'm going to be using that but I'm going to put a twist to it and I'll tell you why uh, through all my search and I ran across another recipe and I actually found it on Facebook of all places I found it in Google but it linked to a Facebook page and it said secret recipe for the uh, Texas hot sauce so anyway I knew right away this was not an authentic recipe because it called for the uh, the onion soup mix, like Lipton onion soup mix. That didn't exist 75, 80 years ago, so I kind of discounted it. But what I did catch in the video was not only do they use the ground hot dog wieners like Tom uses in his video, they also use ground beef. And that's one thing that Terry insisted that the original had was ground beef. So it really called for both of them. That's the only difference that I'm going to be making to Tom's recipe is I'm going to be adding ground beef into this as well. And let's see if this isn't a little bit closer to what Terry has in mind. I have no way of knowing. I've never tasted one of these. I would love to. The ones that Tom did look absolutely great. Fantastic. Had my mouth watering just watching the video. So like I said, I'm going to duplicate what he did. I'm going to put that one twist to it. And let's see what we come up with. So let's get rolling. Okay, I'm going to start this recipe with ground beef. This is one pound of ground beef. And into that, I've got two cups of just plain water. I'm going to brown this off in the water. And the reason being is because you can get this hamburger meat very fine this way, unlike just br browning it off in a skillet without any kind of water. It'll be a very fine mixture, and that's what you want for this sauce. All right, I'm going to go ahead and bring the heat up on this, and like I said, we're going to brown it. Then I'm going to drain this water off, along with any grease that collects on top of that. Okay, I've drained the ground beef. Now the next step is I'm going to take some of these all-beef hot dog wieners, these frankfurters, I'm going to cut them up, I'm going to throw them in this food processor. I have four of them. This is just the regular length hot dog wiener. That's a good fine grind on that as you can see. Those did really well. Alright, on to our next step. Okay, I've got this pot on a medium to medium high just to get it up to a simmer. And we're going to go ahead and start building this sauce. Now keep in mind another thing that a lot of people don't think about is your local water. My water tastes different than the water, let's say in New Orleans or even 40 miles from here. And that can alter the taste of many things. So, you know, saying that, it's, it's next to impossible to really duplicate a recipe perfectly especially if it has water in it unless you use a bottled water from the same company all right first thing i'm going to add are these ground up hot dog wieners these are all beef like i said we're going to add that in all right next i'm taking the ground beef that i browned off earlier in the two cups of water into that i get one quarter cup of white vinegar I've got one tablespoon of paprika, one tablespoon of chili powder, one half teaspoon of sea salt, one half teaspoon of onion powder, 
I'm sorry, that was one teaspoon of salt earlier. Okay, uh, now we get one quarter teaspoon of white pepper, one half teaspoon of oregano, one half teaspoon of cinnamon, one teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes. All right, now, for a few turns of some uh, fresh black cracked crack black pepper. We're just simply going to stir this all together, mix it in well, bring it up to a boil. I'm going to reduce the boil to a simmer and we're going to let this start cooking and reducing for at least a good 30 minutes. All right, I've been going around 30 minutes. I've reduced down probably about a half of an inch. I'm going to keep going here. I want to make sure that all these flavors concentrate somewhat by reducing this and also I got to looking back at Tom's uh, his latest version of this recipe and in that recipe he used six cups of water initially and not eight somehow of another I printed off his version that calls for eight cups of water but in hindsight I'm kind of glad I did because I do in fact have more meat in this than what he he uses he used five hot dog wieners Nathan hot dog wieners that he ground up and added to his sauce. I use four, plus I've got one pound of ground beef in here that I browned off and threw in as well. So that in itself will require more water. But I still think we need to reduce down some more. Might let it go another 30, 45 minutes. And uh, we'll see what it looks like at that point. Okay, we've been simmering here about 45 minutes. Looks like we have reduced, if you look at the line here on the pot, uh, around three quarters of an inch from what was originally in here. And I'm thinking we need to go further, probably around another half of an inch at least, which means probably around another 40 minutes of simmering. Okay, I want to give a shout out at this time to Tom Jones over there at Tom's Test Kitchen. Thank him for this recipe. I didn't modify it by much. I only made one modification by adding the ground beef. But if you'd like to see the original version, his version, you can click on the uh, link that I'll put in the description box. But meanwhile, you can click on this banner right here of Tom's Test Kitchen and I'll take you straight to his channel. Check him out. Subscribe. Check his videos out. This man has got tons and tons of videos. He's been on the tube a lot longer than I have and uh, I really like his style. He does thorough investigation into how things are made and comes up with a lot of his own ideas that are just killer. So uh, go over there and check him out. I'm going to go ahead and put this cornstarch mixture together. I've got a half cup of cornstarch. And all you want to do is add just enough water to blend all this in good. Make it more of a slurry out of it. Maybe just a tad bit more water. That should be plenty. Mix it up well to where nothing sticks on the bottom and it's not pasty. That looks pretty good right there. I just turned my heat up a little bit more just to get this more of a rolling ball because this cornstarch is going to cool this down somewhat and I don't want to lose my ball because that is what's going to thicken the corn starch in with this so just add a little bit of time we'll start with that right there we'll mix all that in all right we're starting to thicken up somewhat I don't think we're there yet let me let this come up to a boil and see what we look like there all right I'm gonna add a little bit more of this yeah that's starting to thicken up nice All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pour the rest of this in here. I think it can go a little bit more. All right, I just tasted this and I think it needs more salt. So I'm gonna go ahead and shake on some more of this sea salt here. Total, I probably went in with another teaspoon of salt. That should about do it. All right, now from what I read on these hot dogs, and these were from different websites where people have actually went and ate these. And the way they described it, the sauce by itself didn't seem like much, you know, until you actually ate it 
with the dog, the mustard, the onion, that's when this really comes together. This is when you experience that unforgettable taste. So with that said, that's exactly what we're getting ready to do. We're getting ready to steam some buns. We're going to steam some Nathan hot dogs, all beef. I'm going to chop up some onions and uh, we're getting ready to build this dog. Give it a try. All right, I got these dogs well underway on this steamer here. We're going to go ahead and add in some buns and get them steaming. We're almost ready. Okay, we got a steamed bun. Oh, they're soft, steamy. Oh, I love them like that. All right, we're going to take some just regular yellow prepared mustard. I noticed Tom used a uh, brown spicy mustard. And I've read different things depending on where you buy these things. I love just regular prepared mustard. So that's why I'm going with that. Now, I've seen this also. I've seen some people put the onions first, then the sauce. I'm going with the sauce first. Man, does it really matter? The taste is still going to be there. Wow, look at that. That is going to be so good. Sloppy but good. Now we get some onions. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get two of these put together for myself. I'll bring you back in just a second. I went ahead and made a second one. This time I put the onions on, the mustard, the onions, then the sauce. I can't see where it makes any difference, but we're getting ready to check one of these and see what all this is about. Oh, I can definitely see why these are a hit. That steamed bun, it's just, I don't know, those flavors of mustard with the sauce, the onions, and the dog, and just the texture of it all. Good Lord, these are good. I can see why they're highly addictive. And I also see what that person said, that the sauce by itself didn't seem to be much, you know? I mean, it was good. But on top of all this, this is a winner. Mm. I could easily eat five of these in a row. That ain't no problem. Matter of fact, I think I will. Until next time, Smoky Ribs.